can Sorry? you can you introduce uh, can you introduce yourself to my audience yes um my name is christina and i have a company called achieve excellence so i'm a sports psychology consultant so i work with mainly athletes to kind of optimize their performance okay so what what is your educational qualification i have a bachelor and a masters in psychology of sport and exercise okay you're from i'm from denmark yeah denmark okay and first firstly i want to thank you for uh, accepting my invitation and coming to talk with me in my youtube channel and uh, uh, can you tell more about your uh, job your work Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh yeah, so basically what I do is I have two so I was a, a professional dancer. So I have kind of two companies. So one is focused mostly just on the dancers, ballroom dancing. So I help dancers kind of set goals and improve their motivation. Um anything kind of to do with mindset. And then my other thing is the with a company called Achieve Excellence which is um just for athletes in general or even people um that just want to kind of improve their mindset or get more motivated um or anything like kind of life improvement skills. Okay. So you will be changing uh, the people's mindset from negative to positive. That is the goal, yes. <laughs> One of the goals at least, yes. Yeah. so what kind of problems you uh, listen from the people who comes to you oh it's, it depends it depends on the people but uh, usually within sport it can be things that are kind of related to sport so it can be that they get nervous before games they're choking before doing important shots for example or it could be kind of problems with confidence or maybe staying motivated to practice um or what else could it be that it's uh, it really varies from person to person but that tends to be the kind of general general challenges okay okay uh, so what 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 do you say to the person who comes to you uh, if he says that uh, he's he's facing continuous failures in his game yeah well first of all kind of discover what what continuous failures and what failure means to him So obviously failure and success is quite subjective so we'll probably look at that first and then look at what what the what makes him fail and what is it that he he thinks he's failing in and then starting to improve that okay uh, what are the game i mean uh, the people you said that yeah, there are a lot of people who comes to, from different sports you are a sports mm-hmm. psychologist so mm-hmm. can i say that uh, every person in in all the sports have same problem same common problems yeah generally they do it's of course it depends a little bit so there are some sports that have more um, diff- a little bit of different challenges or more challenges in a certain area so for example something like dancing that tends to be some some challenges with body image maybe uh but some things like for example like nerves before a game or before a competition confidence goal setting those things tend to be kind of similar similar across all sports and really across life in general okay uh, can i say that uh, family family problems the financial problems uh, plays major role in uh, developing a mindset of a sportsman uh i don't think <clears throat> it plays a role in developing mindset but of course uh, everything outside in your life also um, affects you so that will affect your performance so i try to deal with everything that affects performance and of course if that is that you have arguments with your husband or your wife or you have arguments with your parents or you have maybe financial problems and we need to kind of look at that as well and and how we solve that so that might not be like a kind of a mindset thing as, as such it might be more of a planning issue but sometimes we uh, we also we also work on like planning and organizing and and maybe also just kind of time management so finding time to you know spend with family but also finding enough time to to do your sport and to to have a life and kind of be happy so i always see that i have two main goals and the first one is kind of performance enhancement which is making you a better performer a better athlete or whatever it is that you're doing and the second one is well-being so making sure that you're happy doing what you're doing as well 
Okay, so what is the difference between a sportsman and non-sportsman mindset? Uh, I don't think there is any difference really. Uh, it just uh, it's just a different way of letting it out. But some some athletes, of course, have some. They're a little bit more maybe driven um, in general, but you can find that in normal people as well. It just depends where you put your energy. So um, the psychology of sport is really very similar to the any type of performance enhancement. So it might be, you know, going to an exam or getting a new job or whatever it might be. It's the, the psychology behind it is the same. And uh, what is the connection between uh, body and mind? Sorry? What is the connection between mind and body? And worry? Body, human body um, and uh, mind. What the connection between body and mind is... Well, for sure there is a connection. Whether that, whether that connect, what that connection is, is not completely researched to the degree that I can give you like one definition of it. But, but definitely we know that there is a connection between what we think and what we do in our body. I think we all know this uh, just from the fact, like if you get nervous, for example, we tend to, you know, get sweaty palms. Our heart is racing. That is already, you know, a connection um, that we can feel there. So. So the way that we we have our body and the way that our mind works definitely has a connection to it. Actually, I didn't say that. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a professional uh, cricket player. Mm-hmm. I played for state and national uh, level tournaments. Uh, recently, I stopped playing cricket. That is why the reason I'm asking you too many questions. Uh, ah no, go for it. <laughs> I, I I saw people, I, I love to watch cricket and sports, not only cricket, every sport. Uh, in World Cup, there are a lot of people who play from different countries. And uh, every, every team has its own strategy. And uh, every person in the team, every player in the team has his own uh, way of thinking. And mm-hmm. uh, what I understood is uh, uh, your thinking depends on what you eat, the food you eat the environment you come from and uh, the climate the climate where you are staying and all these are the factors which makes a, a player to develop his mindset and like this uh, i played with different country people different state people who live in different parts of my country mm-hmm. every person thinks in different way one person from uh, uh, haryana which is which is another state from my state he thinks in different way and I, mm-hmm. I think in different way. I, a Jammu Kashmir person who lives in Jammu Kashmir, one of the state in India, he, he thinks in different way. But at the end of the day, we, we, we play for success. We play for victory. Mm-hmm. But the way of thinking, the, the way of thinking is different. The mindset is different. Yeah. You. Yeah, I would say that, um, of course, our mindset is affected by our experiences. So if I have, for example, grown up with like parents that uh, really encourage me and uh, treat in a certain way, of course, that will affect my mindset as an adult. But I think at any point in your life, if you kind of do the work to change your mindset, you're able to also change it. But of course, we have to. So I work with people all over the world, not just uh, people from my own country, but from, you know, from the US, from England, from all over Europe as well. And uh, of course, everyone has a little bit of a different way of approaching mindset, but this the kind of psychology or the way that mindset works is the same for everyone. But I think at any age, no matter what your experiences are, you can you can choose to kind of work on your mindset and change it. But of course, for some people, it will be a little bit more of a challenge than for others. Okay, if a player is playing in a particular country, he's from a particular country and he's going to another country and he's playing the game. Uh, what will be his mindset? Will be the same or the different? Because he's seeing different visuals with his eyes and uh, listening to different sound with his ears. The mindset mm-hmm. will be the same or the different? Well, are you saying if he, if his mindset will change depending on his environment or? Yeah, environment plays. Yeah. I think you get influenced by by where you are, but of course you can't take away where you kind of come from as well. But that's a uh, yeah, it, it depends. Everyone is different. And that's what is so interesting about psychology, that some people might be really influenced by the environment that they're in right now. Some people might be really influenced by the environment that they come from. And um, and you have to kind of find a way to 
So I always like see where people are when I meet them. And then we try and see if that is working for them. If it's working, then we don't need to work on it. But if there's some things that maybe they think they could improve or they could be a little bit better, at, then we find ways to find find uh, other ways of doing that, that that serves them better. So a player, when before entering to the ground, he he puts uh, whatever the whatever happens in his home, how is with his wife or girlfriend or uh, his children, he puts all that in mind. He enters into the ground. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people who say this, and he'll be saying that uh, after entering into the ground, I'll be forgetting all the things which happened before, before, before the uh, match. So there are people who are uh, still carrying those thoughts into the field. Yeah, and I think it's it's about trying to. So when you go into a game, for example, it's about focusing on the things that are important in that moment. And of course, for some yeah. people, that can be quite difficult if you have. If you have a big argument with your wife before you go to play a game, that might play on your mind. But you can learn strategies that help you to focus only on what is important in that moment and understanding that what can we control in this moment and what can't we control. So, for example, going into a cricket game, for example, and focusing on how my who my opponent opponent is, how they are playing, or how the judges are, or what the audience are saying, if they're looking at you or not looking at you. This we can't control and it doesn't really help us. So what you can control is focusing on your own game, focusing on how you're hitting the ball, how you're doing everything. And that is really where the focus should be. Okay. So you're saying that uh, the only thing you can control in your in the world is your own mind. That's it. That, that is true as well. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely yeah. control your mind. You can control other things as well, but we want to focus on the things that we can control. So as a, as a sports psychologist, uh, okay, will you say that... Uh, Uh, a human being can control other human beings brain the mind is that possible for a long time to control other person's brain to control mind? someone else's brain i don't know if first of all i'm not sure if it's possible second of all i'm not sure if it's something you would want to do but of course there are ways of manipulating people where you control other people's mind uh, hypnosis is one example of that as well or just general manipulation but I, i'm not sure what the what the purpose of that would be but but sure you can yeah Yeah, I know people uh, do this for their personal benefit. I know a lot mm-hmm. of people who they do this. Uh, for example, leaders, uh, politicians, business people who are doing this, who are top in. Uh, I what I understood is the, there are people who are in top in different fields. They mm-hmm. connected with lot of people, lot of minds because of the communication skills they have, because of uh, because of knowing how to connect with all the people and what to talk and what not to talk. Yeah, of course. When you're when you're learning more about how the mind works and how behavior works, you're also able to. I don't know if I would say control people because that has a very negative impact, but you can influence how other people think or how other people perceive you. So uh, of course, if you do that in a positive way, that you just get people to like you and this thing is okay, but uh, it can of course also be used uh, for negative. actually we are we are living in a social world it is not possible for us to control our mind all the time mm mm-hmm. so how to control as a sports psychologist what do you say to the people who are watching this video how to control their mind uh, i'm not sure if i would want to control my mind all the time uh, and i also don't think that you should control all emotions sometimes it's more a matter of just accepting that the emotion is as, as it is and just observing it. So sometimes I can see okay I'm feeling upset about something and I'm just observing that without like acting on it. It's more what I when I would say that you want to like kind of uh, control your mind in this way <laughs> is when you're thinking that you're doing some kind of behavior that is not good for you. So that can be you know going to to a game and you're not playing your best because you're thinking about something else. That would be a behavior that is not good for you. Then we can change it. but otherwise i don't think that controlling your mind at all times should be the the goal so how to ignore bad things how do you sorry how to ignore uh, bad things how to ignore bad things i don't think you should ever and uh, ignore it it depends a little bit what do you mean by bad things but uh, negative emotions like anger fear sadness yeah. and so on Yeah. I don't think it's something that we should ignore. We should like deal with them and find ways of coping. So, for example, if I'm angry, maybe one way of coping could be to 
do some breathing exercises or remove myself from the situation or if I'm feeling you know nervous or sad then thinking about well why am I sad what can I do about changing the situation setting some goals uh, so it's more about finding ways to deal with it than to ignore it and uh, how can I know that uh, uh, this is this is not uh, this this uh, this will not come kind of sports I'm asking you other than sports mm -hmm. uh, how, how to know that uh, a person is good in my life and how to select a person this is a this is this is, this is a guy who is going to this is a girl who is going to contribute all the positive emotions in my life how to select people uh, who will uh, who will generate only the positive emotions in me and who will give me only the positive emotions not the negative yeah well i think first of all you need to know what your own values are so if you know how what your values are what your goals are and how you want to live your life they can also see when you meet someone else whether they align with those values. So if the other person is aligning with those values and making you more going towards the goals and the values that you want in your life, then they would be good for you. If they don't, then they're probably not a good person for you. Okay. Can I say that uh, you're the person who can control all your emotions and uh, For me? Feelings. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's very different working with the uh, working with clients and working with yourself. So and for sure, it's never. I I hope you never get to the point where you are perfect in this. So for me, it's a constant work as well, as it is for everyone. Yeah, because this is very very important subject. For it, it is very important for subject for every human being. Not mm, every it's important for everyone. Every and human being. It's not something that you work on and then it's finished. It, it's constantly, you're constantly improving and, and it can always get better. Uh, so you, you are better in solving problems than the people who, who cannot solve the problem. Because you already uh, understood about this subject. I try to be better, better, as good as I can be, yes. Okay. So what is your success rate? Sorry? What is your success rate? For myself or for my clients? For, for, for yourself. What my success rate of what is? Uh, about uh, controlling your own emotions out of uh, <laughs> How yeah. often I'm able to do it? I would say I'm able to do it most of the times, but we are all human, so of course it doesn't always happen. Yeah, okay. So the positive emotions, uh, we love, I mean, we, we love to connect with only only with the people who create positive emotions in us. Okay. And uh, coming to sports, uh, uh, the players, uh, the clients who comes to you will be coming with the negative emo emotions. They'll be telling you all their negative emotions and uh, they are asking you to how to uh, avoid these negative emotions and negative thoughts, how, mm -hmm. uh, how to become, how uh, to become uh, a winning, how to generate a winning mindset how to develop mm -hmm. a positive mindset, what you will say exactly, what exactly you will say to them? It very much depends on the person. So there's no, unfortunately, because we're all human, there's not just one way of fixing things. There are so many different ways. So you have to talk to each person and find out what what their exact problem is and how what they're thinking. And that's why it's not, you cannot just talk to someone for 10 minutes or for one hour and then fix it. You have to, talk to them for quite a long time and understand exactly how their mind works and how they think. And when I understand how their mind works, then we can also see if that works for them and how we can make it work better for them. What do you feel when they say their problems? I, I don't have a, a feeling when I hear people's problems. I'm always happy if I can, if I can help them. So for me, okay. it's always very, it's a very rewarding job because I can... When I can see that someone comes in with something that they're struggling with and I can somehow help them get to a point where they find that it's a little bit easier, that is a very rewarding thing for me. And, and I love I love that in my job, for sure. Okay. How many people got success after listening to you? How many people got what? Got success after listening well, to you, I, your work. <laughs> I have many clients that are successful, but it's... Um, Success, of course, is subjective. So it depends what success means for you. So for you, success might be being a world champion. 
For someone else, success might just be being able to play the game for fun. So it depends very much what success is. But, and also, uh, even if someone wins the World Championship, of course, this is not just uh, my reward. I'm just here to kind of facilitate them getting to that point. But it's not, uh, I wouldn't take full credit for something like that. Uh, how I'm, many people... I'm not here to do it for them, uh, if that makes sense. I'm just to facilitate them doing it. But in the end, they have to do that work, not, not me. I have to just, I can help them how to get there, but they have to do it themselves. How many people come to you repeatedly? Uh, well, you mean how many like regular clients I have? Yeah, regular clients. Oh, at the moment I have quite a lot. Uh, maybe 10 that I see, 10, 15 that I see every single week. Yeah. Okay. But of course, uh, the goal for me is not to have uh, clients like uh, for five, 10 years. Uh, my goal is to help someone and then for them to learn the skills, for them to be able to do it themselves so that they don't need me anymore. So okay, uh, okay. hopefully I can I can teach them, they can go away and then they don't need need my help anymore. My goal is not to keep them. <laughs> so why they're coming again and again then? Why they come again and again? Well, because we have different things to work on. So it might be that someone comes with one one challenge. Maybe they want they feel a little bit nervous in competitions or in a game. And then we work on that, but then maybe we realize, well, there are other things we could work on as well. And then we start working on those, and, and that's why it's continuous uh, work. Because like like I said, with the, um, when we're working on ourselves, it, it never stops. <laughs> so what is the difference between a winner mindset and a failure mindset? Uh, well, that also depends what winning means to you, but I would say a winning mindset is someone who is always a able to like improve on themselves and constantly looking for ways of improvement and focusing on themselves uh, whereas on the other side if, if you're focusing on other people and what other people are doing and how they're doing it that is not uh, for me a winning mindset what is the difference uh, i mean how to handle success and failure yeah uh, that's a big question but uh, First of all, make sure why, what success and failure means to you. And then I would make sure that you set goals that are appropriate. So if you set goals that are good goals, so goals that are, first of all, realistic and goals that are within your control, then you should have very little of those failure experiences. But of course, we all have moments where we maybe don't uh, get what, exactly what we want in life. And then we have to find ways to, to cope with that as well, yeah. Uh, how to balance both success and failure? How to see both equally? To see them equally? Um, I'm not sure if you, you should see them equally, but, but I would try and focus on... For me, success uh, is great, but the, the times where we are not successful, I would try and focus on those and try to learn from them. So instead of seeing it like as a failure and as a negative, I would see, well, what can I learn from this? What did I do wrong? And what can I maybe improve for the next time? So maybe when you see what you can improve for the next time, uh, you learn from it and it actually becomes a positive experience. So then even the failure is a, is a good experience. Okay. So a player uh, uh, met a lot of people yesterday. He, he, he went for a party or mm -hmm. he enjoyed, he played, uh, he went to some, somewhere where uh, he should not go. Next day he ha he have a match. If he's an athlete or if he's, a, if he's playing a particular sport, mm -hmm. then he's uh, waking up too late in the morning and mm -hmm. he's going to the match. Do that affect for a player in the result? Uh, of course. Uh, it's always about preparing for the in the right way. But how what the right way is, is of course different for every person. Probably going out partying the day before match is usually for very few people the right approach but then I would probably talk to them about what their priorities are maybe the priority is going to that party and then they know that the next day they won't play very well but it's worth it for them that's okay if that's their choice but every action has some kind of uh, consequence of course so it's about balancing it out but if, if, if there might be athletes I have also very young athletes and for some of them if they're about like, you know, 18, 19 years old, maybe they really like to go out and party. Then we have to find ways of planning that, that they can still do some of those things, but that it doesn't affect them too badly in their sport as well. 
Okay, so, well, so, do you want to say anything else to my audience? Uh, I just want to say that hopefully they they enjoyed the little kind of advice I could give. And um, I hope that they, I think what is really important for me is people actually take the time to work on mindset. Because a lot of, I think a lot of athletes, they're like just working on the sport and they kind of forget about the kind of mindset side of it. And if they're interested in finding out more, then they can follow me on, on Instagram um, or go to my website. And then they, there's lots of like free videos that they can see there about mindset and how imp- they can improve mindset. And um, they free, feel free to contact me as well if they have any questions. I'm always happy to help. Uh, I have a few more questions. If you, if you, uh, if you want to give answers, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I know, uh, I have seen uh, Christian Ronaldo, who is uh, one of the famous uh, soccer players. He said mm-hmm. that uh, I'll spend a lot of time in uh, preparing myself uh, and I'll not uh, spend time with the people who who will affect me negatively before the match or after the match. I'll not meet those people who create negative emotions in me. And mm-hmm. uh, he's one of the top players in the world. And he said this. And uh, do every person who is playing uh, different sports should follow this or should follow what is working for them? I think that everyone should follow what works for them individually. I think, of course, this this could be, it, it's possible that it would work for someone, but it, it might not. So every person is different. So also we want to be doing things differently for every person. Uh, I think sometimes we have to be a little bit careful that we look at someone who is a top player and they're doing it. So we think we will have to do the same to get results. But because we are a different person, that might not be the right solution to us because we have different needs. So so I think we always have to look at ourselves. But sometimes we can get inspired and see what other people are doing and we can try it. Okay. So I, I used to, I used to play a cricket. I my coach was my coach used to say that you have to hit in a certain way. And mm-hmm. so that you will get the, a boundary. Boundary means a success. You will get a success if you play in a particular way. But I'm not in playing in that way. But I'm get I'm playing in different way. I'm getting success. And he used to force me that don't play in that way. Just play in the way that I said. And mm-hmm. I was disconnected with that coach because he's forcing me to do something which I I can't do. And mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who are going to different uh, academies coaching uh, academies there are a lot of coaches who are uh, changing their uh, own game the players they they'll play in their own way but the coaches are influencing them and changing uh, their game that is why the reason they are disconnecting with themselves and they are trying to become some somebody else and yeah. they are not getting the success yeah 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 i think it's very important to um, to find out what works for you and uh, well, I always, like with my clients, I always try and see first what they're already doing and then try to improve on that instead of trying to change them. So every sport is the uh, same or uh, different? Every sport has some different requirements and different uh, skill, kind of skill set that they need. So, for example, uh, if you play golf, it's a very close skill sport, you know, where you only have kind of the ball and there's no other players or anything like that that you have to deal with in that particular moment where some other sports might be a more open skill so so it requires different thing of the person but the type of psychology behind it is usually the same uh, do you have uh, clients uh, from army i don't but i i do know sports psychologists that work with people in the army yeah because uh, i know army people uh, they, they are disconnected from the social world and they don't have any distractions. Mm-hmm. They, there is nothing that distracts them uh, and the uh, government gives them a lot of money to be far from their families. That is why the reason they are, they don't have any distraction. That de- can I say that that is the only reason why they are focused if they put a, a gun or uh, if they focus on something, if they want to shoot they'll get the success for sure. That is why the reason, uh, compared to the mindset of the people who are living in social world, their mm-hmm. mindset is very strong. They are very focused. Their eyelids, I don't know, uh, their uh, senses, their senses will be uh, 
i mean they they'll focus their their concentration level will be higher that is what mm-hmm. i understood because they have no distraction but when a sportsman a athlete a cricketer a, uh, a soccer player a hockey player or any people who are living in social world they have a lot of distractions like problems from their families or financial problems or uh, mm. the, the problems from the society or uh, expectations all mm. these i think uh, removing yourself can sometimes be a good strategy but again i don't think that works for everyone i think also distraction doesn't always come from the outside distraction comes mostly from my own mind so even though i remove myself from from the problems i might still have things within my own mind that will distract me and i think other people is not necessarily a distraction in life it can also be a positive for some people uh, it works really well to go before a game and just be in their own zone for other people the way that they relax and they prepare is maybe to talk to other people and to to be social it very much depend on what type of person you are recently a movie movie actor a hero of a movie in indian film industry mm-hmm. committed suicide because okay. he because the reason is in newspapers and uh, in all the media uh, it says that uh, he committed suicide because of the depression because of the failures that he faced and the, <clears throat> because uh, seven movies that he signed the directors uh, uh, said him not to be a part of those movies and uh, that is one that is the major reason why he committed suicide and he is one of the uh, biggest actors in india Yeah, and he did a movie uh, of a biopic called ms dhoni ms dhoni mm-hmm. i hope you know mahender singh dhoni he is a cricket captain indian cricket captain mm mm-hmm. uh, uh, and he uh, the sushant singh the actor cre- did a biopic of uh, uh, mahender singh dhoni and he got a uh, fame uh, money and name with that movie he is he is one of the fantastic people Uh, mm-hmm. but still he committed to side and uh, total india india got shocked by seeing this news how can he commit suicide how can he feel depressed how can he go into the neg- negative state he is already a successful guy he got uh, n number of movies he did great movies like biopic of ms dhoni who is a captain of indian team mm-hmm. what do you say about this kind of mentality Well, I think it's probably not so much a matter of the the failures that they face because um sometimes you see people that go through constant obstacles and they still manage to overcome them and other people are not able to deal with them so it's more about having the the tools to be able to deal with them and those tools can be maybe talking to a psychologist or it can maybe just be having a really good support network of friends where you can talk to them or learning different skills that you can cope with these kind of difficult things so The problem is never really the obstacles that we face the problem is like how we deal with those challenges okay and uh, i hope you know about sachin tendulkar who is a cricket god who is, who is called as cricket god in india mm-hmm. okay yeah he is uh, he is a guy who played uh, cricket for 20 years in his life now he is retired mm-hmm. from cricket uh, he is one of the top uh, cricketers in the world and uh, mm-hmm. he played cricket for 20 years and uh, what is the reason behind playing 20 years successfully oh that's a good question we would have to ask him that maybe what the, what his secret is but i think it's a, it depends on every every person but i would think a good good way to approach being successful for such a long period of time is to constantly being able to overcome obstacles and co- constantly keeping a positive and a good mindset but how he's done that uh, he will have to answer that question <laughs> I mean, he's married. He he got kids, and her his wife is a, a doctor, and his mm-hmm. wife is four years older than him. Mm-hmm. Can I say that is one of the major reasons why he played twenty years continuously? Because he has a wife that's four years older than him, or or because four she's a doctor? Four years old and who is a doctor and uh, who who got a best wife? I can say. <laughs> maybe maybe major that's secret. Reason. Maybe who knows it might be that he has a great wife and he's she's kept him through it it's possible <laughs> So it is very, so you are saying that it is very important for a human being to get people who motivates them all the time who gives all the positive emotions and positive thoughts and Yeah I think 
Yeah. I think we can only do that for ourselves. We can only have our own positive thoughts and motivate ourselves, but it can be a, a positive thing to have people that we really care about and that care about us and that they have a positive mindset around us. Of course, that also affects how you think. Yeah. So what is driving you? Me? Um, it depends a little bit on the, on the situation, but I, I like to be happy in my life and I like to help people. So for me, I found a job that where I really enjoy it and I'm really able to help people become the best they can be. And I love that. So every morning I wake up and I'm happy to do that. How do you feel if you get compliments from your clients? Oh, com- compliments always feel good, I think, for everyone, right? <laughs> okay. So, but for me, yeah. the biggest, I would say the biggest compliment is, uh, is when my clients go on and they do well and they are happy. That is, that is all I need. I don't necessarily need them to compliment me. <laughs> that is success for you. Which means yeah. that your words, your words work. Yeah. Do you have Do you have blog? Do you have a website? I do. Uh, so if you go to my website, it's called ballroomcoach.com. I have okay. uh, articles on there, um, how to kind of cope with different uh, things, you know, stress, motivation, things like that. So yeah, I, I do. I also have uh, a podcast. If anyone's okay. interested, where I kind of interview different athletes and how they are dealing with different areas of mindset. So my podcast cast is called Achieve Excellence. Okay. I have a lot of people who, who are connected with sports because I am a sportsman. Mm-hmm. I'll share your links uh, in the description of this video and uh, okay. they'll find you if, uh, if they... I, I'm sure they'll be having a lot of uh, problems or if they feel... Uh, they need support definitely i want them to uh, take support of yours i'll share your links in the description of this video thank and, you so uh, much. Uh, the website the website and the podcast and, yeah and uh, and it's not just for someone who has kind of problems it's just if they want to just become better and optimize their mindset then then that's the way to go so it doesn't have to be like a particular like problem as such it's just get once anyone who wants to be better okay and thank you yeah. so much for giving your valuable time to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for, for talking to me. And have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Can I put this video on YouTube? Of course. Of course. Feel free to share it when it, wherever you want. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.